I have spent 35 years of my life working in an industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and they do nothing but annihilate the population of this world. And why do they do that? Because they want to make money, 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 money. They don't care about your lives. They only care about their wallets. My hands are just as dirty as these people. The pharma industry gave me a good job. And I felt that I was in medicine because that's what I studied. So I started as a salesman. And as I moved up in my career, where I eventually became a director for a company uh, in Sweden, the, the, the affiliate company of one of the largest and most evil pharma corporations in the world, Eli Lilly and Company, because I was part of the evil. I had a career. I did a lot of bad things. They fired me. I started my own company, worked for several other pharma companies, big ones, world players. People are dying from taking medication that was legalized because I had bribed the Swedish government to get the Sulasso for Prozac in Sweden. Now, can you imagine that? Sweden is reputedly one of the cleanest, most transparent countries in the world. They have the Nobel Prize of medicine. The Americans, they love the prestige of the Nobel Prize. That is why it was important for them to get the registration of Prozac. What is the pharma industry doing to us? They're the most powerful industry in the world. They sleep in the same bed with governments. They use corruption to get what they want. Corruption involves money. They have lots and lots and lots of money, and that is how they make their money. They also kill more people than the wars we have in the world. We need the pharma industry because there are some good things out there, but most of it is rubbish. They're not interested in curing any disease you may have. They're more interested in making you get diseases. They're interested in symptomatic treatment. They want patients who are diabetics, cardiology patients, Parkinson's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, arthrosis, because you live a long time and the drugs that you have to take, you take that for the rest of your life. Eli Lilly and company was fined Strafgeld by the Justice Department in, in, in Pennsylvania in America. 1.4 milliard dollar for one product that I have written about in this book two years ago. That product was used to treat it was a neuroleptic, a psychodrug, that was approved to be used on schizophrenics. So this company wasn't satisfied with that. They went and sold the drug to uh, old people's home because they say it wouldn't cost so much to be there in this ho home because you give them this pill and the, the old people will sleep. So the, 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 the workers wouldn't have any problems at night. But what they didn't figure on was that this drug had the side effects, which, by the way, before it came out, they had hidden under the table the clinical results of these side effects. A lot of people died of heart failure, uh, kidney problems, and whatever. 
The patients that received this drug, it's called Cyprexa, also got diabetes. And who is the largest diabetes medication producer in the world? Eli Lilly and Company. Speculating, speculating. So they were taken to court and they were fined. It's the largest Strafgeld in the history of the nation. Now there are a couple of other companies that were fined heavily for other drugs in the, the pharma industry. And these are, these are huge companies. But it never came out. You know why? Because the press, the press works also with the pharma industry just like the government does. The pharma companies use the media to implant is dirty work on you. Don't take for granted what your doctor is telling you because the doctors these days, they don't know much about medicine and they don't care much about their patients. They think about how much they can get paid. And this is how the pharma industry reigns, stays in power. They buy the doctors. They pick them up when they're in medical school, pay their uh, tuition, Die Konzerne. train them. Because the doctors don't get information from anywhere else except the pharma industry. And I know, because when I was a salesman, the pharma company used to tell me, never talk side effects. They taught us something called FAB, F-A-B features, advantages, and benefits. I also know that they hide the dangerous side effects because I was in charge of a, a clinical study for Fluctine or Prozac. When the doctors came rushing into my office one day because we were running a small trial in one of the largest hospitals in Stockholm. Yes. The first week they started the trial, two of the patients tried to commit suicide. And this is a major side effect of these psychotropic drugs. They call them the SSRIs, serotonin, mm -hmm. selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. The pharma industry, by law, is not uh, obliged to give out information like that. Have you guys heard of ADHS or ADHD? But all these years I've been in medicine, Nobody can come and tell me up till now what ADHD is. Syndrome makes it a sickness. Since they can't prove that this is a sickness, they change the S to D, calling it disorder. And when it comes to that kind of disorder, for example, how do they measure serotonin in the brain of a child? Do you know how to do it, doctor? With the Ouija board, that's, that's one way. You get yeah, the psychiatrist to sit down, you know, with a little bow tie, psychiatrist. These are mad people. <laughs> they sit every year and they sit in a room and they make up what they call the Bible for psychiatry, the DSM. If this Bible was so good, and so needed and does an exact job. Why did they change this, the rules in this uh, uh, Bible during the last few years so many thousands of times? So they're targeting the children. They're calling these new fancy diseases. They're targeting them with these drugs. Stratera, Prozac, Ritalin. Paxil, Zoloft. I don't know about you guys in here, but that's not going to happen to my kid. Ever. Never.